Scary Tales, essay by Jackie Torrance. I guess I like scary tales so much because my granddaddy liked scary tales. He'd have to tell one if it killed him. He was sick a lot, but if visitors came, he'd prop himself up in an armchair and put a quilt on his lap so nobody could see his nightshirt. Then he'd put his derby hat on. He loved that derby. And somebody would say, Mr. Jim, tell us about that time when the fire dog followed you down through the wheat field. And my grandma would say, hold it, let me leave the room, lightning's going to strike. She always said, granddaddy was the biggest liar God ever blew breath into. So she'd leave, but not me. I'd get closer to Pa, because I wanted to watch the people listening to him. There used to be an old man who came to our house named Hall. I would hear people say, Mr. Hall wears a rug. I didn't know what a rug was. I'd lay down on the floor, and Grandma would say, What are you doing? I'm trying to find Mr. Hall's rug. And Grandma would say, Get up, get up. That ain't nice. Well, one day, Mr. Hall was there, and Grandpa started into one of his scary stories. There was a piece of wood burning in the fireplace, sort of sticking out, and Pa spotted it. I watched him put his tobacco way back in his mouth so he could get a good long shot. At just the right moment in the story, he threw his head forward, and that tobacco came out and hit that wood just right. It fell off on the floor, and the fire sparked up. Somebody threw a baby on the floor, men ran out, and Mr. Hall ran out too. When he passed us, Mr. Hall's scalp was as naked as the palm of my hand. Jesus have mercy! Granddaddy scared the hair right off Mr. Hall's head. Well, I went over to his chair, and there in Mr. Hall's hat was his scalp. I picked it up. Grandma, is this Mr. Hall's rug? Grandma said, put that thing down and go wash your hands. Oh, I loved those days when Grandpa told his scary stories. So when I started telling stories in school, that's what I chose. Scary tales. I've got storytelling friends who'd rather be killed than go to junior high. But not me. I love junior high. That's 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And those kids can't believe they're going to have to sit there and listen to me tell a story. So I do just what Grandpa said. If you want to get the attention of a mule who's too stubborn to listen, you take the branch off a tree and come right down across the top of his head. What is my branch? A good scary story. When I tell those kids I'm going to scare you, when I start to give them a little bit of fear, well, they're ready to listen. A lot of people have told me I really shouldn't tell children scary things. Well... Children can frighten themselves without your help. When they're alone in bed, they hear things and they see things. So I just help them along. It's dark, I say. And there's a strange voice. Where's my hairy toe? That's all they need. They remember the dark and they're scared again. And that's good. Children need to be frightened. We all do. It's an emotion that was given to all of us and it should be exercised. When you don't exercise it, you lose your sense of fear. That's why my granddaddy told me scary stories. He wanted me to know that only fools rush in where angels fear to tread. You should be a little hesitant sometimes, his stories were saying. You should think twice before you go into the woods. There just might be a hairy man, and you need to be cautious. My grandfather scared me to death. Grandma would say, Get up on your granddaddy's lap and kiss him goodnight. I'd throw my arms around him and say, I'm going to bed. And he'd say, it's dark up there. And I'd say, I know. You know what's in the dark? No. Monsters, he'd say. What do monsters do? They'll drag you off the bed and put you in the keyhole, he'd say. Well, I yelled and screamed going up the stairs. My grandmother would say to me on the way up, would you stop crying? There's not a keyhole big enough to put you in. So I remain fat for the rest of my life. That's why no monsters have ever bothered me.